that we pass in this uh, body, either you know, the difference they make or very often the difference they don't make to real people at home, to the people that you work for and represented in Newark. I think about a mom, uh, I'd say to my colleague from Ohio or Colorado, the presiding officer, uh, a mom in Rifle, Colorado, who w was in a, uh, an early childhood center there. Uh, and, and she was so happy to be there. Her, the other moms were happy to be there, too, because until they had that early childhood center, they had to drive 30 miles through Glenwood Canyon to get to Glenwood Springs to put their kid in daycare so they could work. And now they could actually have it in their community. But what she said to me was that I work so I can have health insurance, and every single dollar I make goes to pay for this early childhood center so I can work. It's that triangle that so many Americans are caught in because we have had an economy that for 50 years has worked really well for the top 10 percent and not for anybody else in America. And for too long it seemed like Washington wasn't paying any attention to that. I mean, what was our solution to that? To spend $5.6 trillion on two wars in the Middle East that lasted for 20 years, to, to come to this floor to cut taxes not for working people, not for the people that needed it, but for the wealthiest people in the country at a time when our income inequality was higher than it was in any time since before the Great Depression. It made no sense. It was like if the mayor of Denver, who the presiding officer used to be, so let's just imagine that for a second. It's as if the mayor of Denver said to the people of Denver, we are going to borrow more money than we've ever borrowed before. And I'd say, as a concerned citizen of Denver to the mayor, that worries me. I'd like to know what you're spending it on. Are you spending it on the parks? Nope. Mental health services, because we certainly need those in, in our, nope. Homeless? Nope. Our roads and our bridges, no. Schools, no. What are you spend? You're borrowing all this money. What are you spending it on? The mayor would have said, well, I'm going to give the money that we're borrowing to the two richest neighborhoods in Denver and expect that somehow it's going to trickle down to everybody else. That sounds crazy, but that was the Bush tax policy. That is the Trump tax policy. 65% of that bill that he called middle class going to the top 5% in America. And that's why this is such a new day. You know, I've said on this floor before that, that it's long past time we started treating America's children like they're our children. And that we wouldn't accept the conditions that so many kids live in unless we thought they were someone else's children. This country, as the senator from New Jersey has said before, this country is 48 or 38 out of 41 industrialized countries in terms of childhood poverty. In other words, we have the 38th worst childhood poverty in the industrialized world. Only three countries are worse than we are. The poorest population in America our children. And we have some of the lowest economic mobility of any country in the industrialized world. We tell ourselves we're the land of opportunity, but we haven't looked like that for a very long time. And the policies that have been passed here haven't helped. And that's where the child tax credit comes, in, comes into being. We, we increased it to $3,000, $3,600 for kids under the age of six, we made it fully refundable so the poorest kids, the millions of poor kids who've never benefited from the tax credit before because their parents made too little money, now have the benefit of it and it's going to be paid out starting tomorrow on a monthly basis. So when families are making decisions about how to pay the rent, put a little food on the table, buy a few hours of daycare so that they can stay at work and earn a living, they'll be able to do it. So they can work, as the senator from Ohio so eloquently says, with dignity.
And in my view, this should just be the beginning of creating an economy that when it grows, grows for everybody, not just the people at the very top. And that strengthens our democracy by giving everybody a sense that they've got a real stake in the economy and that their kid's going to be able to live a brighter life than the life they live. That's what it's supposed to be to be in America. And so I'm, I am grateful to stand here today with my two colleagues and with the presiding officer to say, finally, finally, with this president, we are treating America's children like they are America's children. And we don't have to accept chronic childhood poverty as a, as a chronic feature of our economy or our democracy. We can have an ambition that's greater than that for our country and for our children. And we can say to our kids, you're important to us. In some ways, you're all that matter to us. And the position we put you in to, to be able to get an education and contribute to the society and, and help lead the country, participate in our economy and our democracy, that that's our priority, that that's what we care about. And I think that's President Biden's priority, and he's reflected it incredibly well in this policy. And I'll turn it over to the senator from Ohio just by saying, now we have to do the very hard and important work of making this a permanent part of our tax code so that we, 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 we cut childhood poverty permanently in half in this country. I'd like us to end childhood poverty in the United States myself. I think that'd be a very worthy aspiration for all of us to have. And with that, Mr. President, I yield the floor to my wonderful colleague from Thank Ohio, you. who's been a, an incredible leader on this from time, even before I was in the Senate. Senator Bennett, thank you, Mr. Mr. President. Senator from Ohio. Thank, thank you. And, and Michael Bennett, thank you for when you said this is a new day. And it's, I, I loved how you set that up. The mayor of Denver gives a tax cut or at least pours money into the richest neighborhoods in Denver. 